He's the immortal Matt Brown. He's kind enough to join us right now. He goes up against Brian Barberina on Saturday, March 26th, and he's our next guest. Matt, how are you, my friend? Very good. It's good to... Uh, Finally, it's right. Yeah, fine. Right. Finally. To, to which part? Ohio? Ohio fans, fight nights out of Vegas. Yes. Fans, man. Mainly fans, man. I'm, yeah. I'm just so stoked to get some fans finally, man. Yeah. Well, how do you feel about those Apex events? You know what? I actually, um, you know, I, I actually kind of liked it. Um, Why? I didn't think I would like it. It kind of brought me back to like the Ultimate Fighter days. Um, so it was just kind of felt like a little throwback for that. But, um, you know, it's just very personal. I like the smaller cage. I'd say that that was probably the biggest thing. I like a small cage, man. Why is that? You know, I, I, want, I want him to stand right in front of me and, right. you know, wing shots and let's see who gets knocked out. Like a phone booth, right? Just stand in there yeah. in the pocket. Yeah. yeah, closer to a phone booth, the better. Do, do you feel like um, while you like all those elements, l- missing those fans, not having that energy as someone who's so used to fighting in front of fans, was it tough to get going? Was it a little weird? Uh, absolutely, man. The first time I fought without fans in Jacksonville was very uh, creepy, man. It was really weird. Um, I feel like it threw me off a little bit, um, which was my fault, you know. It was, uh, no excuses, but I, I did feel like it threw me off. Um, Abu Dhabi was very strange, um, but I felt like I finally kind of got used to it, got to the apex, felt like I did well, and but man, I want the fans back. I'm stoked, bro. Especially, I mean, how much better could it be? It's in my hometown, fans back. Uh, I've got a great opponent in front of me. So this is a, it's going to be awesome, man. Now you live in Columbus now? Yeah. Wow. How yeah, far I'm are you, here. how far are you from the, uh, the arena? Um, 10 minutes. Wow. That is amazing. So fight week, will you stay at the hotel or will you stay at home? I've been torn about that. I haven't really made up my mind yet. I'm going to kind of play it by ear. When I fought locally before, um, like I fought in Columbus twice so far, both times I stayed at the hotel and just treated it like an away game, basically. Uh Um, I might do different this time. I don't know. I'm just going to play it by ear. I'm not going to overthink it, really. Um, Off the top of my head, was your last time fighting in Ohio the Cincinnati event against Eric Silva? Yeah. Wow, that was, I mean, what a tremendous finish that was, and that was a huge fight for you, main event. What do you remember from that? Did that feel like a home game for you, even though it wasn't Columbus? That that was totally a home game for me. There was, uh, you know, that that was Cincinnati's hour and a half away. Mm. Um, I I have a lot of connections down there. I have a lot of family down there. So that was totally a home game for me. Um, And I, I just remember being awesome, man. I just remember being excited, and everything was great. And then um, before that, I fought in Columbus here. Uh, Rampage Jardine yeah, was UFC the main 96. event. Yeah, Yes, yes. You remember, I fought uh, Pete Sell. Oh, man. So, yeah. So, this isn't nothing new to me. Um, so, yeah. Uh, we're just going to do it again, man. And uh, so far, I've had great fights in Columbus and, and performed really well. So, I plan on another one. That that uh, Eric Silva finish, is that one of your favorites? Or maybe the favorite? Mm, they're all favorites, man. I don't know. You don't have that was number probably, one. This is definitely one of my favorite fights. You oh, know, like amazing. The, the entire experience, like just the the fight itself, was obviously a, a pretty good fight. Coming back from some adversity, I mean, uh, at the time, I mean, Eric Silva was just a killer. You know, he was on a run and um, probably juiced out of his mind and just <laughs> smashing through everybody, and you know. Just, <laughs> just looking great and that, you know, had a lot of hype behind him and I just put a stop to it. Um, my kids got to come in the octagon with me after, um, I had more family at that fight than I had my family reunions. I mean, it, so just the whole experience, man, was just awesome. Why do you think he was juiced out of his mind? Well, I mean, maybe, maybe he wasn't, but uh, we can only assume, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, we can look at some pretty obvious details, and I mean, I, I don't. I think there was a lot of people juiced out of their mind at that time. Don't you think? Yes, absolutely. Do you do you feel like there have been a lot of times in your career, like at the wands or leading up to fighting, you're like, oh, I'm about to fight a guy who's juiced out of his mind. This should be fun. For sure, for sure. 
Um, I think the most telling was when I fought Jenny, Johnny Hendricks. And um, I think, it, uh, you know, post me fighting him, I was, the, uh, we were the last fight card before USADA came in. Oh yeah. Uh, and that uh, post fighting me, I mean, his career <laughs> went, I mean, it was just a, a, such a disparity, man. So, you know, that, that was the one I think was the most clear. Eric Silva's like, he probably was, maybe not. I don't know. Um, but Johnny was like clear as day, man. That pissed you know, he you was off? Ripped. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like it, but you know, the, at the time of that, um, that was something that you had to deal with, you know? I mean, it, it wasn't, I think it was pretty well known. Um, you know, there was a lot of guys doing it. Yeah. So it pissed me off, but, uh, I also knew what I was getting into. So, you know, I could have turned down the fight, you know, but I didn't. If, if someone would have told you back in 05, 06, when you started your career, that as a 41 year old, you'd still be doing this. You'd still be one of the, you know, more popular fighters. You're coming off wins. You're being featured on these cards. Would you have believed them? Like, did you think it would last this long? <laughs> um, it's a good question. I don't know, man. You know, when, when I started this, I, I told myself I'm doing this for life. I married the sport. Um, whatever happens, happens, man. If it's going to be in the UFC, it's going to be in the UFC. If it's going to be, you know, fighting guys in bars and clubs or whatever, that's what it's going to be, man. Um, this is what I love doing. And I'm a martial artist for life. And um, I'm just blessed that, you know, for one, I'm blessed that I've, I've been able to uh, have some longevity in the UFC, but um, I've also worked my ass off and 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 done a lot of things to uh, keep myself where I'm at. And so, like, I mean, you've had many different sort of chapters in your career. Um, we were just yeah. talking about like a great chapter that you had a few years ago. What was the time where you were kind of the happiest in your career, where it just felt like everything was coming together? <laughs> you know, you were just enjoying things. As I'm mean, not to say that you're that not is- now. Yeah. Um, I'm a happy guy, man. I know everybody, everybody says, ah, he doesn't smile and shit. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm a focus guy, but I'm a happy guy, man. You're, you're the, 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 I'm, the period of your career that you think back with the most, you know, fondness. No, right now, man. Right now. You're living in the moment. Yeah. It's, yeah. This is, it's, it's all great, man. I love every, I've loved every second of this ride. And, uh, I got, I still got a long time to go, man. So, and I think right now my skills are better than they've ever been. I think that I got, um, I, I can't wait till next week, man. I'm going to show, um, some, some things that people are not expecting me to be able to do, especially at this age. Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to look like a 25 year old in there. Wow. I'm, I'm going to show some things. So I'm going to, I'm going to blow some people's minds away and, and I'm going to start looking to get back to that top 15 and, and I think people are going to start taking notice again. And, you know, I'm not going to be this old uh, forgotten man that a lot of people might be kind of looking at me as. Did you feel like that was starting to become a thing that people were starting to forget about you? Well, maybe they are, maybe they're not. But, you know, I hear most of the interviews I get these days are like, dude, you, you thinking about retiring? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you haven't asked the question yet. No, you I'm probably not had it on your no, somewhere. No, 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 no. I'm not going to ask. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you want to, you want to talk about that, but it sounds like you don't. No, I don't, no, I don't care. I mean, uh, I'm open book about everything, but the fact is, you know, that that's what I hear a lot, you know, and you, know, you get it from, you know, family and friends, you know, the, the like, dude, you, you know, we don't want you to have CTE or, you know, all these different things, but um, I feel better than I ever have, man. And I think my skills are better than they've ever been. And, and again, I think I'm going to show a new level out there. Is there something that you're doing differently now to feel this way? Have you changed anything, whether it's training, diet, mindset? Yeah. What is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm putting together all the knowledge for one that I've had over the years. And it's actually, you know, I'm actually using it, you know, not just kind of going out there and banging away. And for two, I'm actually resting. Mm. You know, I've never rested. I I never took time off, man. Uh, I've always been the guy that's back in the gym on Monday after the fight. I'm, I'm the guy that's, in there doing, you know, two, three hour sessions, you know, until I can't walk out of there. Um, and, and I got people around me now like, look, man, you you just need to rest, man. You take a break. And then when I do take those rests and I take those breaks and I come back, I'm I'm like, damn, it feels pretty good, man. So, um, I think that's going to make a big difference.
To that point, I found a quote that you said to UFC.com last year that I thought was really interesting. And uh, you don't hear a lot of people speak like this. This is the quote. Uh, quote, I think a general thing that I try to tell every fighter, because you see it so rarely, is to treat it like a business. Have a business model, have a business plan, have a strategy in terms of how you approach not only the fights, the training, all that stuff and more. To compare it to a business model, a business plan, what do you mean by that? Like, are you actually putting together documents and things like that? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I do. On all my opponents, I do a SWOT analysis, wow. which is a strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. Um, I, I, I write out an entire, like each training camp, I write out a business plan, so to speak, but it's like a training plan. Um, you know, I sit down with my coaches and we go over um, all these different things. Um, when I say treat it like a business, most people take that as, uh, you know, the branding part and the outside of the fight. I'm, I mean, the actual fight itself, you know, I look at it like a business and I make it structured and and make it um very uh if you can't write it down then you can't do it you know and and, and i'm very big on like if i can't measure it then i can't progress it so those two things are, are probably the the number one thing that i talk about when i or what i mean when i say that so what i want to do is have everything as objective as possible and this is a uh, very difficult in this sport. And there's not a lot of objectivity in the training uh, and there's not a lot of objectivity in the, the mindset, but so I have an entire mindset formula program, you know, day one, we do this day two, we do this, et cetera, et cetera. I have the same with the physical training. I have the same with the strategy. Um, and, and that's how I look at it. And, and, and nothing ever goes according to plan. It's the same as a, a real business nothing goes actual to plan, right? You have to be dynamic. Um, and that's where the art comes into it. But if we can take as much of that out of it as possible and make it objective as possible, then I think we can uh, measure, progress, um, adapt, measure, progress, and, and keep the circle going and, and keep improving. The SWOT analysis, the, the mindset, all that, are you the one writing that on your own? Yeah, I end up having to do it on my own usually. You know, it's... Huh. Not a lot of people. I, I could tell you right now, there's not a lot of people on board with this system that I, I built and created. <laughs> like, it's hard to get coaches on board. Why? It's hard to, you know, people people just aren't built that way. You know, especially fighters. Uh, they're just not built to uh, be structured. They're not built to be. Uh, I mean, the nature of a fighter is to, you know, just go train hard and and kind of play it by ear. You know, so. Um, I mean, I do have some coaches, you know, that are like that. And I have some people around me that are like that, but, um, it's difficult to get them on board. And, and I'm, I just take the, um, prerogative myself and, or I do initiative myself and say, look, I'm going to fucking do it. You know, if you guys, it's up to you, you can, you know, join on board or not, but I want to have my mind very clear going into a fight. And so I'm going to do it myself. Who got you into that? Cause I would imagine, correct me if I'm wrong. You weren't like this 10 years ago. No, definitely not. But I got myself into it. Did you see someone like? Did you think think of this no, on your own? Or I've never someone... seen. I've never seen anyone do it this way. Wow! So no one inspired this. Like, okay, so when did it start? How did it start? Yeah. Okay, so um, it actually started. Rich Franklin told me that uh, originally. He told me treat it like a business, and that's how I took it. Was this uh, sort of systematic approach to training and and strategy? Um, what he actually meant was, you know, the branding and all that kind of stuff and promoting yourself. Um, but that's just how I took it. Wow. So that went, how long ago was that? Mm, over time. I mean, but certainly, you know, it's a developed thing. It wasn't, you know, one day I just started changing everything, but it's just been over time over the past 10 years or so. Um, you know, back in the day, especially when I first started, one of the things that I really focused on a lot was my uh, strength and conditioning and cardio because the way that I seen it was I, I could go to the gym and learn all these skills. And that's just a, a matter of uh, neural development over time, right? That's just going to take years and years of practice. I have to drill this over and over, you know, everything is a, uh, is a um, action reaction, you know, so you have to get those actions, you know, 10,000 hours, right? the strength and conditioning, the cardio, all of that stuff, like they tell you, like they have books on it, right? Like you can literally just go read it and, and pick it up. Um, 
so when I think when uh, kind of coming from that world, uh, the strength and conditioning uh, mindset, like that's sort of where I kind of uh, developed it from, right? Because that that that's you know if you look at like power lifters or uh, strength athletes, um, endurance runners, you know anybody, it's very objective, right? So they take everything and, and it's very. Um, you know, if you look at like Lance Armstrong's training, like everything's extremely objective, you know, they measure the heart rate, they measure the blood volume, all these, uh, you know, oxygen, all these different things. So I just try to take as much of that as possible and put it into my own training. Um, because that was something that I could con control, um, knowing that the knowledge is right there. If you just go get it. Um, since then I've had multiple, um, great coaches, um, you know, the, where the books can't teach you things, you know, you can only learn so much from a book. You have to actually uh, learn in person or, or through, through someone with the experience. So that's, uh, I guess that's kind of the story behind that. I know you don't, um, you're not referring to actual business when you're talking about treating it like a business plan, but I do get bummed, especially now, you know, covering the sport for so long, when you see these guys who are coming up and then they retire and they're left with nothing. Um, you have put a lot of time into the sport and the way you are treating your training would lead me to believe that you're not going to be one of these guys that you've been thinking about whenever this journey ends, you'll, you'll be okay. Sure. Is, is that accurate? I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I have, I have put a lot of work into my post fight career cause I know that this could end any day. I mean, I have injuries all the time. I have stuff that I have to deal with all the time. Um, so, you know, I do have my gym, um, that obviously is a business. So, you know, you have to do that like a business. Um, I have my coffee company, uh, the, the immortal coffee.com a uh, little plug there. Yeah. Um, and you know, I have some ambitions to do other things too, you know, like train other fighters. I have a lot of guys coming up in my gym, um, uh, with a lot of talent. Um, you know, I mean, I have a lot of talents, man. I mean, I could do really whatever I want. I'm, I'm a smart enough guy. I could really, I think I could do whatever I want. Uh, the coffee company fascinates me. So, so what's the story behind that? Why, uh, why should people buy the, you said the immortal coffee.com is where they can go. Yeah. 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 Well, so I was sponsored by a coffee company for a while and this guy, um, uh, named Connor, who's my business partner, he was sending me this coffee and I just kept thinking, man, man, this is the, the best freaking coffee I ever had in my life. Um, it's, it's just great coffee. So, just kind of became friends with him over time. And he was having some uh, trademark issues with his company, um, with the, the name and everything. Um, so he wanted a new name and we kind of became friends. So he said, Hey, you know, that, that the immortal coffee has a good ring to it. Maybe we could use that name. So we just partnered up and now we're pumping out loads of the best coffee you ever had in your life. Wow. From I where? I send you some here. Yeah. I got to send you some, Ariel. I appreciate it. I love coffee. I'm a big coffee fan, yeah. especially with the three little kids, as as you well know. Um, yeah. Where's the, where's the coffee from? Well, we get it from different sources. Um, you know, we, we check all the sources. Uh, Connor does that part of the business, okay. but, you know, he's very big on, you know, going through co-ops and, you know, knowing exactly where it's sourced from and everything. But the, the difference between our coffee is it's um, – Got. I'm trying to remember the name of it, but there's they grade the coffee, right? And okay. There's, uh, I believe, three different grades, and there's okay. like ours has to be every coffee that we get, every bean we get has to be over ninety, I believe, and I believe that's premium, right? So there's you know there's like good coffee, and there's like medium, and then there's you know your Folgers or whatever kind of garbage. Yeah. And our, all of ours is uh, the top grade. Wow. Okay. It, is the dream maybe a coffee shop? Do you want to open up a coffee shop? We've looked into it. I would love that. Yeah. I mean, you know, every business is such a grind, man. Yeah. You know, you gotta, you gotta pick your battles with that. Uh, I also learned, see, we're learning that Matt, the immortal Brown, who maybe at first glance, you're like, okay, he's just a tough fighter, has many layers to him, right? I mean, we were learning about the business, <laughs> the approach, the life after fighting the coffee. I also learned, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, you are a soft, you're a romantic, a self-proclaimed romantic, right? Which is not something that I would think of, Of you know, you, Matt Brown, romantic, immortal, it doesn't really, you are a romantic. When you say you're a romantic, what does that mean? 
fuck, man. You have to ask my girl, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that's private. Man. That's private. Okay. I keep, I keep, no, no, nah, man. I think it's from Valentine's Day, right? Sure. You wrote, yeah, yeah, you wrote that. Yeah. Yeah, you got you got a wow the girl, man. I got the best girl you could ever imagine. I, I can't even believe that I have her, man. Um, she's Canadian, by the way. Really? And uh, from what? Which, yeah. which part of Canada? Uh, Toronto. Okay. How did yeah. you meet? Uh, uh, we met online, nice. and uh, yeah, you know, just fucking fired off, man, and haven't looked back since. And now we're engaged. So, Congrats. everything has worked out great. I got the, I got the, thank you. I got the best girl you could ever imagine. And I would never have been a romantic dude ever in my life. But when you meet that one, it's easy to do. It opens up that whole other part of you. Yeah, man. Turn me into a softy. Nice. And I got a daughter too. So she turned me into a softy. That's right. That's right. So now you're like big on Valentine's day doing, I mean, the immortal <laughs> side kind of goes away and the, the softy side comes out. You're, you're okay with this. You're comfortable with this. Yeah, man, I'm comfortable with myself. Yeah. I think uh <laughs> you say that in a very intimidating way, by the way. I just want to let you know. <laughs> I mean, look, a strong woman, uh, the right woman can make a man better. Amen. That's what I got. Amen. So I want so I want to please her and I do what I can to make her happy. If that means I gotta be a little romantic, I gotta be a little romantic. Uh, I gotta suck it up. <laughs> it's not natural for me. I can't lie. It's not natural. It seems natural. But I can do it. I believe it. Yeah. Uh, has has this relationship added years to your career? Because if you're happy, if you're content, right, with that part of your life, I would imagine it helps go to the gym, to fight, you're clear-headed. Do you feel like this has added some time to your, to your fighting career? Well, she's added some time uh, to my life. You know, she makes my life much better. So that's uh, all you can ask for, man. Right. Amen. Um, also, you know, we've been talking a lot on this program about uh, Bitcoin lately, cryptocurrency. Uh, I know nothing about this, but we've had some uh, some experts come on, namely Ben Askren, Ken, Kenny Florian has come on, all trying to explain me about the, uh, the, the powers of uh, cryptocurrency. And it's become a hot topic in the world of MMA with this Marshall nice. Rogan thing. You know, are you following this story, the Marshall Rogan Inu story? Uh, a little bit. I've heard about it, but I haven't really followed it, to be honest. Have they reached out to you? Because you you talk about it a little bit. Uh, you know, you mentioned it a few times on your social media. Have they reached out to you? Um, they don't need to reach out to me. Oh, but um, why not? Uh, I'm not interested. So okay, <laughs> uh, I am. I, I'm a crypto guy. Yeah, very very much so. I'm a Bitcoin guy, first and foremost. Um, my. <sighs> I didn't know we were going to get into this. Oh, is this controversial? Um, um, I don't know if I'd say controversial, but okay. look, so my um, my philosophy on Bitcoin is you got to read the book, The Bitcoin Standard. Mm -hmm. And that's, a, so I'm essentially, a, I'm a, a very staunch libertarian, uh, freedom loving, government hating son of a bitch. Okay. <laughs> Bitcoin is our key to freedom, is my belief. Um, Again, I don't, you know, we don't need to get deep into the politics or anything, but sure. um, that's that's my reasoning behind Bitcoin. I'm not about all these uh, garbage shit coins. There's something like 15, 20,000 coins out there now. They're all garbage. Bitcoin is the king. It's decentralized. It's uh, it, and it's uh, our chance of freedom. Okay, so uh, these, I think they were, uh, Ben referred to it as a meme coin or a dodge coin. That yeah. type of. You're not down with that. No, I don't have any interest in it. Um, Even though they're supporting fighters, they're paying, they're giving fighters a lot of money. They said up to a million dollars they've paid out over the last month or so. Yeah, uh, that's great. I'm, I'm happy for that. I think there's probably a lot of ways to do that. Um, I look, the only thing I looked into, it looked to me like a, sort of a GoFundMe for fighters is what it sounded like to me. I'm not sure exactly uh, what it is or why it's a, a crypto or the, you know, people get into all this stuff about the, you know, all these different coins and the tokenomics and, uh, you know, it's, it's all garbage, man. I mean, I do think there's some great projects out there outside of Bitcoin. I think that there's a lot of utility in the blockchain. I think there's a lot of uh, opportunities in the crypto world. Um, but for me, I'm a believer in Bitcoin primarily um, ideologically more so okay. than 
then I'm not in, in into it just to to make a buck. I get that. And even though I, even though I hope I get rich with it, I hope sure. I get rich with it. And the best way, again, the best way I think for everyone to understand, if anyone is interested in my point of view on this, the Bitcoin Standard is the best book to read to understand this point of view. And I hope that everybody can read that book and I hope everybody gets on board. And this is our way of economic freedom in the world, in my opinion. Uh, two last things and then I'll let you go. This has been a great chat. I appreciate it. Having a guy, a legend. Thank you, uh, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Mark Coleman by your side. Uh, what is that like? For, I mean, that is a living legend. And you know, I say this a lot. People get tired of me talking about this on the show. MMA does a lot of good things. The sport of MMA, no one in particular, but the sport of MMA, I think, does a horrendous job of remembering and honoring the legends of the sport, the people like Mark Coleman, who without them, yeah. there is no UFC, there is no nothing. These guys who were fighting back in you know, Alabama when no one was watching need to be remembered. They need to be brought, I think, 30th anniversary next year. They need to bring out the best fighters, the top 30 fighters like the NBA does for their 75th. We need to start honoring these people yeah. before it's too late. Mark Coleman is one of those guys who would be at the front of the line, front of the, you know, uh, of the whole damn thing as a legend. What is it like having him, you know, by your side as you're preparing for these fights? I love it. Thank you for saying that, Aaron. Yeah. Yeah. Let's promote all, all these guys, man. These, those guys went through things that uh, we can't even imagine. They did it for the love of the sport. There wasn't nothing in it for them. So uh, I absolutely love it, man. Thank you. Um, and But having Mark around uh, is unbelievable, man. And, and watching him get sober through the last year, has, has just been an unbelievable experience. I've known Mark for a long time. Um, you couldn't really be around him too much so for uh, the longest time uh, with the drinking and the uh, abuse and stuff. At this point, he's just a new person. He's an amazing person and just brings a whole new level of energy to the training, brings a whole new level of motivation and inspiration. And it's just amazing having him around. And I hope that... Uh, I hope that what you're promoting there goes through and, and these guys get the love they deserve. Yes, we need a Hall of Fame, a proper MMA Hall of Fame where people are honored and inducted regardless of their promotional affiliations, no politics. We need to remember pride. We need to remember Shudo and all the king of the cage. Yes. These These legends need to be remembered properly. And I think, honestly, the sport does a poor job of that. Um, as a proud Ohio guy, how do you feel about the uh, the Paul brothers? Oh, <laughs> um, I, I, I've talked about this with a few guys the other day, you know, how do I feel about them? So this is how I look at them. They're essentially what I, I, I first I give them props, right? They're making money. Mm -hmm. So good for them. Um, I'm not sure what they want to do. If they want to be uh, particularly Logan uh, or particularly Jake, I mean, I'm yeah. not sure if he wants to be a, a, a legit boxer and respected as a boxer, in which case he's going to have to fight some real boxers, um, which may not garner the same paydays that he's uh, used to getting, right? Like he might, might have to fight some lower level boxers, you know, without such big names, but maybe he'll still get the same payday. He's a big draw for sure. But what the way I see it is they're just doing something different, right? They're doing an entertainment. It just happens to be boxing that they're using for the entertainment. Um, the stuff he says about fighter cool. pay, do you, do you see that stuff and do you feel like it's genuine? I have no clue. I, I don't know what he's doing. I have no clue, man. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but it is interesting, yeah. right? I mean, talking so much about, yeah. I just think putting a spotlight, genuine or not, the fact that we're talking about it more can only be a good thing. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, it's, it's one of those conversations I kind of just bow out of, to be honest, you know, like, um, I'm not really in a, a situation to be, you know, talking about that. I'm, I mean, I, I think, um, regardless of the situation in you, everybody feels like they're underpaid. I think we're, uh, um, we're probably underpaid, but you know, it is what it is. I live a good life. I, I'm happy with the lifestyle that I'm able to live. Uh, I've worked very hard for it and I want to keep it going. Um, I have a lot of opportunity to make a lot more money. Um, but uh, I'm not really, I don't feel like I'm in a, a situation to make a, uh, a, a big difference or a big change. So I'll let others talk about it. So I, I, it's not really my, my wheelhouse right there. 
I respect it. Um, and uh, was just curious because of the Ohio connection. But uh, it's uh, it's always great to pick your brain, especially for this extended period of time. Congrats on your longevity. Congrats on the recent win. Good luck next weekend. That's going to be quite the scene uh, when you're coming out there in front of your, your, your hometown crowd. So great to have the fans back for a fight night, not just a pay-per-view. I hope it becomes the yeah. norm once again. And we could get back to these you know full arenas because it just – Brings out a different kind of energy for the viewers, for the fans, for you guys, I would imagine as well. So uh, much respect. It's a great matchup, you versus Brian Barbarina. Great matchup. Uh, I know it had to be postponed yeah. due to COVID. Glad that you're okay, all good, and that we get to see this fight. So appreciate it very much. Good luck to you next weekend, Matt. Absolutely. Thank you very much, sir. All right, there he is. One of the, uh, the OGs of the game, Matt the Immortal Brown.